ocean, on a submarine or to Antarctica, somewhere where you are away from your normal world, you're away from the rest of the world, you are working with your colleagues doing just SSP. Um, so there's no room if you think you also need to do uh, SAT prep or take a class at the community college. There's uh, no, no time for that. When you do SSP, that's the one and only thing you do. You do get to sleep. You do get to, you know, chill out and relax sometimes. But it is very intense and immersive um, and very much like sequestered away with your cohort in a little bubble as if you were together on a submarine doing work. It's also a little bit like being in a sports car. You are a sports car that can go really, really fast. In high school, the streets are narrow and crowded. There's lots of other cars and you kind of have to go the way the slow traffic is going and you're kind of stuck. But at SSP, it's not like that. You have the open highway. There is no speed limit. You can accelerate your learning to whatever extent works for you. Um, there's no boundaries. You can explore and push yourself without any limits. And the whole group does that together. Not everyone is it exactly the same. Everyone kind of goes at their own speed. Some are good at some aspects, some are good at other aspects, and everyone works together to do as much as they possibly can. So SSP will help you focus your personal goals and aspirations and to develop confidence to rise to new heights. We hope you like STEM and continue to like STEM, but that's not the... You accidentally muted. Um, we want you to understand your own goals better after SSP. You might be a scientist, you might decide it's not for you and you will become something else and that is okay. We're also gonna expect that you're gonna leave with confidence to do whatever you set your mind to do, which might be a bit more than you think you can do right now. So this is where I'm gonna hop in. And we, we've kind of talked in general about like what the vibe is, what to like expect in mentally preparing for what we're after, but like, what does this look like in a more functional sense? Like what is the actual structure? What is SSP on the ground? Um, and so for the how question, I'll clarify that. Um, so each program has eight faculty that are working alongside the students on their campuses. Um, so those faculty are composed of the teaching faculty, which um, this year is going to be uh, three teaching faculty for most programs, as well as a TA or multiple TAs, and then a site director as well to handle the less like academic needs that students have while on campuses. So that the faculty is composed of teaching faculty as well as programmatic faculty. And then the participant cohorts, um, there are 24 to 36, depending on the campus. And everybody is living and learning on a campus community um, and having that kind of time together. They're gonna be sharing meals, they're gonna be sharing um, dormitory space. And uh, within those larger cohorts, each group, there are groups of three that are working together to tackle the research uh, topics that we have. Um, and so, um, and so some of the SSP values are um, collaboration, community, exploration, inclusive, inclusiveness, and integrity. So these are the backbone behind um, the way that SSP likes to structure things, the way that we like to think about things, and in a lot of ways, the type of community that we end up having at SSP, because we are drawn to students who have the same values that we do. Um, those are, you know, key components to the way that things are structured once you're actually participating in the program. So do keep in mind these values. These are part of what define who we are. And so also another question you might have is, this all sounds interesting, doing some summer, some summer things with my summer, but like why uh, are some other reasons that this might be helpful for me to consider at this um, point? And so, some questions you'll be able to answer is, what does it feel like to be a STEM major at a selective college? Um, 
you know, there's people coming into the program with every range of experiences in STEM. We have people who have known that they wanted to do STEM for quite a while. We have some folks who, you know, are more recently thinking about STEM and what that could potentially look like. So this will get you to experience before you actually enter college what a STEM major and that process would feel like. And so you get that preview, you can determine, is this like what I think makes sense for me when I'm in college or is maybe something different more what I'm aligned to? You also get to experience what it feels like to actually be a scientist doing research. Um, you know, it's not so that every every high school student has gotten that opportunity. Even every college student, depending on the college you attend, can be difficult to find yourself in an actual research space before graduating. And so you'll get the actual research experience as well, um, beyond just the exposure to college level STEM. And also you'll get to just experience being part of a community of people who are intellectually curious and motivated. Um, Again, everybody has every walk of experiences, but it's probably not um, unlikely to say that your high school is full of all sorts of people that range in how actively committed they are to academics or how interested they are in scientific topics. But when you come to SSP, it's kind of transformative, partially because everybody is interested in STEM and like wants to learn more, and that's what, what drew them here. Um, and so that will be another kind of benefit of coming along is being in a community of peers and building that community um, a little bit earlier than you would if you just started in college. So again, these are some questions that you answer when coming to SSP and some benefits of, of thinking about your involvement. Another kind of theme of questions that um, is going to be helpful coming out of SSP is, you know, you're going to be able to practice what college applications are like. We have uh, some similar structures where you're having to like kind of go out of your comfort sh uh, shell and ask people for recommendations. So we do have teacher recommendations. You have some short answer questions that are similar to college essays. So you're kind of getting a preview of like what that experience feels like and how to talk about your talents and how to talk about your interests. Um, oh, okay. So, um, and if everyone doesn't mind just muting for us, that would be awesome. Um, so good practice for college apps. And then also good practice on maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't work out. I don't, I don't think we have a resistance. And, um, and just having that experience of uh, just like, you know, what it'll feel like later on to experience various uh, failures. And so ultimately, your chance of getting in if you don't apply is going to be zero. Um, if this is something, when you're looking at the, the requirements, when you're looking at what you're doing on the, on the campuses, if you read through that and you're like, this sounds like something I find really exciting, don't think about, you know, the outcomes, like what is the likelihood I'll get accepted? Think more about like seeing yourself in the program and what that could look like for you. Um, and try not to, try not to worry as much as possible about your chances of being accepted or not being accepted. So also for some context for that, since we did get some questions about that, our acceptance rate tends to float around 10%. Of course, it's not predictable from year to year about what that looks like, depending on our number of applications and our number of spots available. But um, I did see that question in the, in the Q&A, so I wanted to cover that. So we wanted to kind of give you like the background and a little bit of introductory information into SSP. Um, can everybody see the web page that just popped up? No, okay. Now? Okay, perfect. So we wanted to give you some background information, but to really get the deepest understanding, because we can't really cover every question that you're gonna have about SSP in an hour or two hours, even three hours, um, we're gonna direct you for some further learning to the website. And um, I know people on the call, some of us have been involved in thinking about SSP for a while, or maybe members of our, our Discord, and some people are maybe just hearing about SSP for the first time. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the key points on the website to find the answers that you're looking for. There are two tabs that I recommend pretty much exploring in their entirety. The starting point is going to be Explore. Um, with this kind of information session, I'd say we'd have covered a lot of what's involved in this tab here, what is SSP. Um, and thinking about your fit, I do recommend taking a pretty thorough look through this page 
and trying to determine, um, you know, does this sound like something that I find exciting? We link to program fee, which I'll talk about a little bit later as well. Thinking about whether you should apply and things that we consider. Um, you'll find some of that information here. Um, you know, the things that we find really important in applying are, are there. So this page I think is pretty helpful in kind of evaluating fit and whether this seems like something you would enjoy. I also think in the Explore tab, clicking through these benefits just to see what people say about SSP and um, kind of the college preparation aspects and then parents, because we do have parents in the call, seeing their, their reflections from past parents as well. I think that a lot of the meat of what's interesting here because a lot of people I've seen in the Discord are kind of asking about, like, I'm interested in science. I have a lot of interest in science. Maybe how do I determine which project I want to do? Um, I really recommend going through these uh, these program-specific tabs that we have for the three programs that we offer, astrophysics, biochemistry, and um, genomics, and getting a sense of what that looks like. And so you can see on each page, a brief video about what the program involves. Um, you can see kind of a walkthrough about the actual work that's being done. So for, for astrophysics, for example, doing some stuff in Python, um, the topics that you cover are also gonna be on every page, astronomy, physics, math for astrophysics, and some other just introductory information to give you more insight into the actual academic program really just take a deep dive into those things and see what makes you the most excited and use that to kind of help shape your interest in, in the programs. So again, we have one for each program type. Um, another kind of common question is our host campuses for this year and the timeline we have for host campuses. So host campuses are the college campuses where we operate um, throughout the country and we're expecting to have those released by the end of January. And so just, we will be, um, when they're available, if you have an application already in our system at that time, we'll send an email out to you about what the host campuses are. If you're kind of waiting for the host campuses to be posted to apply, um, then just keep an eye on our webpage, check back at the end of January and see um, what, those, what those ended up being. But we do recommend if you're thinking about SSP, just to give yourself a jump on the process uh, to go ahead and start your application, even if you kind of want to wait to see what the host campuses are. And if they, if you're not interested in the host campuses after all, then at least you had the time to kind of prepare your application beforehand. So um, host campus and program date information will be coming out by the end of January. The other tab we find helpful is this apply page. I would go through every tab of this as well in pretty much its entirety. The actual application itself is going to be on this main page of applying to SSP. You can see the webinar we are currently on is listed here, as well as the next one we have coming up. Um, deadline information. Everybody this year has the same deadline of February 16th. This is different than in the past where we've had staggered international and domestic deadlines. Um, and so don't worry about any of the nuance behind that. Um, and then the timeline for notification is going to be about mid-April. I did see that question in the FAQ submitted ahead as well. So that's when you can expect decisions by. Um, prereqs, take a look at those. Uh, there are gonna be different prereqs for each program. Um, and then depending on your, for astrophysics, depending on your uh, apply year, you'll have different requirements as well. So take a thorough look at that. For the fee and financial aid component, this is our fee for um, this coming year, but we meet 100% of demonstrated financial need as a program. So what that means is um, there's some general guidelines about how that ends up uh, working out for students and families here. So for lower income families, um, we're generally going to be free. That's going to cover the travel expenses and general stipend pieces you'll need as well once you're on campus. Um, so we have some travel coverage and then some like daily spending kind of funds that we give students who have high need. Um, and then there's kind of a rolling scale uh, below a certain income as well. These are not hard pieces either. And so there's a chance that these numbers might actually go up this year so that we're able to get a little bit more aid than we have in the past. Um, but this is kind of a guideline to help you think about how this will work. 
So meeting 100% of demonstrated need. Another piece that's new this year is for um, for lower income students who typically need to work over the summer. We're also uh, offering a $3,000 lost wages stipend to a small number of students who let us know by email that they uh, need that in order to attend. So that's something as well. We're very committed to trying to make sure SSP is something that anybody can get to you um, and that nobody is barred by the possibility of simply not being able to attend. Um, these FAQs are also very, um, very helpful in thinking about like whether to apply. A lot of people are asking about like, why would I apply as a junior when I could apply as a sophomore? That's a very common question. Um, and so this kind of really breaks that down. I recommend checking that out. Uh, we can also talk more about that during our kind of Q&A session. And then other pieces that are key to the program. There have been some changes this year to the way that we are we're admitting students. For example, we used to accept tests and we no longer are accepting tests. You'll see some of that information is here. Um, we're not collecting or considering tests. Again, as we mentioned, another change is that the international and domestic processes used to be separate and they are no longer separate. So you will, uh, international students no longer have to pre-apply for financial aid as they have in the past. Everybody will apply for financial aid um, after they have received an acceptance. Um, and then you can do that at that point if you wish. So again, just be sure to check out the FAQ. It's gonna answer a lot of the questions that you have on your mind as you're beginning to think about exploring SSP. Um, so I think that's a lot of the, the main points we wanted to cover. For the rest of the session, we're going to try to open it up to something perhaps more exciting than just learning about us and learning about it from people who are actually involved, um, as well as me and Amy being on the call to kind of chat about um, your, your program specific questions or things that are more about how we review and things like that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to introduce our alumni. <laughs> Um, we have alumni from a number of graduating years um, so that we can try to cover every sort of background, people who just graduated recently, and so the experience is a little bit more fresh, <clears throat> as well as some alumni who graduated longer ago and have experienced college and um, know kind of how the SSP experience has been long term. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Andrew, if you don't mind just popcorning to the next alum that you want to go after you. Uh, can you tell us, Andrew, your name, um, the program, your graduation year, you have that in your name, but um, and just some like general background about you and then popcorn it to the next person. Of course, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrew Cho, and I did genomics at Purdue University in the summer of 2022. Uh, personally, I'm from Kansas City, and I'm currently a freshman in college. Uh, Tommy? Hi everyone. Also, excuse the glare. I've been trying to recalibrate. So if that gets in, in my face, please let me know. But hi, I'm Tomi. I was a student at the Purdue campus in biochem in 2018. I'm currently a senior at Harvard College and I'm from Atlanta. Oh, and we'll go to Kai. Hi, I'm Kai. I also went to Purdue for biochemistry, but in the summer of 2023. Um, and I'm from Connecticut. Uh, Mateo? Hey everyone, I'm Mateo. I completed SSP in astrophysics at New Mexico Tech back in 2022, and I'm currently a freshman in college at Columbia University. And let's go to um, Kesha. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Kessia. I'm a 2023 participant in SSB and astrophysics at UNC Chapel Hill, and I'm from Poland. So I'm going to pop to Amari. Hi, I'm Amari. I was a genomics participant in 2023, and I'm currently a junior uh, in Augusta, Georgia. And I believe that's all of us if we're open uh, to questions now. Awesome. And so um, so as we're kind of answering some of the pre-submitted questions, 
Uh, think about questions you have for alums. I see some are, are in the chat as, as well. Um, we'll cover some of the pre-submitted ones. And um, as we're doing that, submit more as you think of them. But um, one of the pre-submitted questions we had that people were wondering about is, you know, let's say in the glorious timeline, you apply to SSP, you're admitted to SSP. Once you're kind of on the campuses, what are like some of the expectations that folks have of you once you're on the campus? Um, you know, again, you don't have to be super specific, but like once you're at SSP, what do you have to do once you're at SSP? Um, so I believe like first of all, collaboration is very important. You're in this community and you have to collaborate with everyone. And like when solving PSETs, it's usually group work rather than working individually. It's not like, um, oh, I got the answer first. I'm going to keep it secret and I don't know, get rewarded. It's a very collaborative experience. So probably the most important expectation is that you work with your peers and collaborate and treat it as a group experience and group project rather than something you do individually and I don't know, compete with, with others because that's just going to take away from your experience. I completely agree with like all everything about collaboration. That was one of the biggest draws for SSP for me as well. But um, SSP is also kind of unique in that it doesn't have like a set of rules or guidelines. It has like, it has an honor code. So the expectation when you get on campus is that you're going to be able to handle yourself maturely and like work well with the people around you without needing to be um, too greatly micromanaged in that sense. Yeah, and to hop off what Kai said, I think the beautiful thing about that is it's really your self-motivation along with your peers or in your lab group, for example, that will push you towards, uh, let's say, a new uh, method of doing a project that was once done another way. It's really, uh, it's your own drive that will push you towards bigger and greater things when it comes to SSP, and it gives you the framework to do that rather than holding you back. That's awesome. Um, and speaking of kind of the the community aspect and the collaborative aspect, another question we got several times pre-submitted was what the what the kind of participant to faculty interactions are like. Do you rarely see your faculty? Is it like, you know, they just lecture you? What is the relationship that participants have with faculty members? I could answer that. So oh. You go, Andrew. Oh, thank you. Um, for genomics specifically and my campus, I'd say the mentors are super, super kind and super generous and super um, willing to work with you. And so for me, especially my research mentor, it was more of like a friendship almost. And that really made as a piece much more enjoyable. Um, obviously, you have to be professional. You have to um, be mature and be nice to your, um, to your uh, mentors and to the other lab TAs, et cetera. But overall, I'd say you de definitely uh, develop a relationship with all your mentors and your um, the upperclassmen that are guiding you. And so just be there and um, just be respectful, but obviously they're there to help you. And so ask them any questions and their expertise is very useful for your research. Yeah, I have the, um, oh, you go. Sorry. Um, so for my campus, at least, the faculty were always there to Help with any questions both with the material covered as well as just like questions in general um while i came in a little bit with the expectation that it might be a lot more uh formal in a way i actually found that the faculty were really open just to communicating about any of the interests that i got from some of the lectures because oftentimes i'd have a few questions afterwards and they would always be happy to answer whenever we'd had lectures and there usually be a few people who'd go up after the lecture to ask questions and they were always open to them so the faculty are usually really supportive and always there to help you if you have any questions or if you're just interested in learning more about the topic. Aside from just your professors, your TAs and your site director are always pretty accessible um, because they or not the site director, but the TAs live with you in the dorms. So it, at least for Purdue, I don't know if it's always the same, but um they're always super accessible, so you can always ask the TAs a question if you don't have access to your professor, um, et cetera. And I, I agree that it was like a lot less formal than I thought it would be. Um, 
for example, like for our for our campus, our one of our professors played tennis with us once, which was kind of nice. Yeah, and I'll just chime in and say, uh, like the question kind of made me laugh for a second as to do you see them often or I feel like it's more do you see them too much? <laughs> like you live in the dorms with your TFs, um, your site directors, your academic directors are always around for questions. I remember my year, we'd go to activities. Like we went to see the fireworks or like we'd go to state parks and the directors would come with us. So you have that kind of social interaction. You have them as an academic res resource, basically 24 seven. Um, the community, it, it doesn't stop. It's not a nine to five by any means. Awesome. Um, I'm going to mix it up and throw a question to Amy, if she doesn't mind. Um, so a question for the staff level is, uh, what happens if there's a health crisis for a student while on the campus? Yeah, I answered briefly in the chat, but um, I do want to address that further. Um, we did operate twice, uh, two summers since the pandemic. In the first summer, 2022, it was a little bit dicey. We did have a few um, cases where we had to isolate uh, participants last summer. Um, it was pretty smooth sailing, a couple of, you know, minor illnesses and uh, injury or two. Um, every campus has at least one site director. If there's more than one program on a campus, each program, so group of 24 or 36, will have a site director. That person is typically a high school um, teacher who has many years of experience and they have received training from us. Um, to have to know how to deal with everything outside of the academic. So anything health, safety, wellness, happiness, um, your parents haven't heard from you in two weeks and they're they wonder how you are. The site director handles all of that. When there's an illness or injury, the site director is the first person that the participant goes to. The site director will call home and or call the nurse on call, each campus has a nurse who's on standby 24 hours a day. They are not physically on the campus living with the participants, but they are available by phone and they can triage by phone. Um, in some cases, it's just handled by phone. If something is more serious, they typically say go to urgent care. The site director knows where that is and how to get to the closest one and what those hours are. So they're prepared to handle those surprises that come up. If it's more of an ongoing um, issue, if there's a chronic health issue or something that needs to be managed, the site director will be in conversation um, with you and your parents beforehand and kind of ongoing checking in as needed with the parents if there's any um, kind of ongoing health issues that we need to be aware of. Wonderful. Um, another common theme that we're seeing in the Q&A and the pre-submitted Q&A is about what it's like to be an alum. Is there a community as an alum, um, one year out, two year out, 10 year out, 20 years out? People are just curious kind of about the alumni community and you're all alums at this point um, with kind of different years of experience under your belt. So like, what is what is it like once you leave SSP? Do you get to talk to people still? You can take this one. Um... I can definitely say that after SSP, you maintain those friendships for a long time. Uh, even now, I've just this morning, I was talking with some friends about college requirements and what we're doing over winter break. And these are friends that I made now two summers ago. So these connections that you make from SSP really stay close. And the other benefit is you usually end up seeing uh, people from SSP down the line. For me, I actually, some of my closest friends from college are SSP participants from different campuses. So even though we were in different locations and had different programs, we still connected over SSP and really became close. And now we help each other in college. So the community for SSP is really strong. And even when you finish your program, you're still connected to all these people. And that connection stays with you throughout uh, your future. Yeah. Also, as the resident old person, I feel obligated to chime in here. Uh, I sign off on everything Mateo said. The community really stays with you. I remember applying to like the schools that I ended up visiting and really falling in love with. I remember applying right alongside with all of my friends. I remember them being like a big support system for me, even coming into school. Like if I wanted to visit another school, if I wanted to hang out with new people, the first kind of community I could go to was like, are there SSPers there? And I knew that they would kind of, you know, get it and be my people. So throughout college, I think some of my close friends have honestly been people I met at SSP. Some of my closest friends that I've met 
through friends have somehow just been SS peers. Like we wouldn't have talked about it. My friends wouldn't have known. And then we'll just be at a dinner talking about our random experience four years ago in the middle of like Indiana. So it's been a great time. I think the community really goes with you and yeah, I, I love it. I'm still here today. You're also given a lot of chances to connect with people from outside of your program or outside of your year, even as like, um, I'm, I'm not in college yet. I'm still a high school senior, but I've been able to like, at least online, speak with a lot of people from other campuses, like, um, and other years, especially through like the discord servers, um, including the applicant server that you guys can join. Yeah, I would also say that as a senior applying to college right now, it's also very helpful to have some older friends whom you can ask questions regarding college or the application process to college. So that is also very helpful to have friends from a variety um, from many stages of life that can help you in the application process for college. Yeah, and just to like extrapolate how much of a help the alumni network is, I'm still a junior in high school and it's like every other day I'm bombarded with my friends' recommendations of what to apply to next, like what they applied to last year, what they're just finding about. And it's like so awesome to be, to be able to have those connections and to, you know, just explore opportunities I would have otherwise never uh, would have had. And I'm barely an alumni. I've only been an alumni for a few months now and it's, it's a whole new world has basically been open to me. So it's amazing. I kind of want to sort of add, just because for me, SSP, one of the main things I got out of it was the friendships that I made. And to this day, I still talk to them. Some of them are some of my best friends. I visit them on different college campuses. And so truly the friends you make out of this um, opportunity and this experience are, they may la they ma uh, may last a, a lifelong. And so just, just be open to making new friendships and uh, meeting new people, especially if like Possibly you're on a campus of uh, multiple different programs. You can meet new people from there too. Yeah, um, talking about people from lots of different places and backgrounds, um, a question people have is maybe this is one of the first times they're gonna be away from home for such a long time um, with such different types of people. Can you guys talk about the experiences of uh, being away from home, whether that was near or far, um, particularly like the experience for international students was one of the questions that we received. Um, so I'm from Poland, so Europe. So um, it was a six hour time difference and my parents were in a different time zone. So I was very far away from home. And the last time I was away, for, from home was like for two weeks in middle school. So it was definitely a big jump, but I did not notice it at all. I really enjoyed it. And to be honest, I did not miss home at all. It was amazing. Everyone was very supportive and I made so many great friends. The time passed so quickly. I just didn't even want to come back home. So, and also a thing that is important to mention like during many camps, at least that I visited, there was this rule that you couldn't have your phones or couldn't call your parents. Meanwhile, at SSP, you can have your phone and well, you're responsible for how you use it. But when you have free time, you can call your parents so you can keep in contact. It's not like you're completely cut away from home for the five and a half weeks. So that's very nice, too. I, I had the same experience of like, I, I personally didn't get homesick. I wasn't that far away, but it was a full flight. um And, but like, I know that other people had a different experience in terms of um how they, how they dealt with homesickness, if they had it. I know one of my lab partners was really homesick for like the first two weeks before she adjusted. And my other lab partner was really homesick for about the last week and a half. But I know that like, neither of them would say that it was not worth it to go just because of that homesickness like the amount of people that you meet that are just actually incredible and will be there to support you if you are a little bit um maybe down from like not being at home or if you need help with laundry or whatever else it is like the amount of people that are there for you is incredible so it's it's fine if um if you haven't been away from home for that long before I 
had never even done laundry on my home before um before this program Yeah, I, uh, in my experience, ended up being a little bit homesick earlier at the start. Um, before SSB, I hadn't been away from home for such an extended period of time because it's about five and a half weeks that you're gone. So uh, for the first few days, I definitely had a little bit of trouble with it. But the best part is that you have all these people around you who are super excited to learn and honestly really share a lot in common with you. You kind of create like a new sort of family during SSP. It ended up to the point where throughout uh, once I hit like week two, week three, getting later on, I barely had any issues with uh, any homesickness because I was already feeling at home with the program and with the new friends I made. Oh, and I will say, I personally did not get homesick. I <laughs> like I didn't think it was a problem for me. I'm from Georgia. The program was in Indiana, so it was a flight away. But the my mom kind of felt the homesickness by proxy. And she said later on that it was kind of a good experience for her to, to see me off on my own before going to college, like to see me kind of being in an intellectual environment and to have me get a little bit more used to it, to have her get a little more used to me getting that independence. So I think it was a helpful process in terms of my growth and building that community and also her growth and seeing me be able to do that and feeling more comfortable when I had to a couple years later. Cool. Um, mixing it back to some stock questions that I think I and Amy will probably give input on. Lots of questions about how do I craft a good SSP application? What makes me a good applicant? Like, what are you looking for? Those sorts of questions. And I want to say what we want to know on our side is just who you are. And you can't completely show us who you are through an application because it's not a perfect representation of you but to the best of your ability, like showcasing the different things that make you up. Fill out your application, be honest about the things that you're truly passionate about. It doesn't have to be all STEM things. People have asked like, you know, are you looking for research experience? Are you looking for a certain level of research? We're not looking exactly for anything. We are just trying to evaluate the way that you are going to fit in with the program, um, and the kind of interesting qualities that you're going to bring to the program. We have a holistic review where we're keeping in mind that not everybody has the same access to opportunities. And so that's going to flavor like our interpretation of your application. But don't think when you're crafting your application about what it is we want, because if you are a good fit for SSP based on who you are, then that will shine through. Um, if you look at our values, look at what we're doing, and it is something that you are like jumping up in your seat, that's probably a good sign. And we're probably gonna be interested in you as well if you're interested in us. Um, so think about showcasing the, the range of talents and the range of interests that you have to the best of your ability, um, using your essays to touch on different components of you um, and giving us like a pretty wide picture of your background. Just think about who you are and does your application show who I am and make that kind of your number one priority. And everything else, if we're a fit, will fall into place after that. Any other thoughts from you, Amy? Yes, I would echo all that you said. And I will say it again in similar, but my own words. If, I mean, you have to think about this um, application to SSP and applications to anything else that you might consider for the summer and when you apply to college. The process is not to sculpt yourself into what you think they want. That is going to fail you. You are going to end up somewhere that you don't fit, and then you're not going to be happy. They're not going to be happy. No one's going to be happy with that. The most important part of applying to SSP, applying to other opportunities and applying to college is understanding who you are and what you're like and what you want to do and then telling about that honestly. And also at the same time, understanding what the program or the college is like and think about how that's a fit for you, how that matches who you really are. If you try to mold yourself into what you think we want, that's probably not going to work out to be a, a fun application to read. Uh, we want to hear who you really are. Even if it's a little bit silly or quirky or you think it's not enough, tell us about it. We've read 
thousands of applications. Um, we can kind of see patterns and see what we're looking for. And it's hard to, to tell you, it's hard to tell you what authenticity sounds like, but it's one of those things when you read it, you know that that's what it is. You're, you know, there's agreement among reviewers that, oh yeah, that sounds real. Um, so trying to hide or sculpt yourself or put on a, a face that isn't really you is not going to benefit you in the long run. Um, if you trick us into accepting you and you get here and you're miserable, that doesn't do anyone any good. <laughs> it doesn't do you any good. You won't be a good fit for the program and you will feel like that. So just be honest. Read the website. Read the page where we list our values and think about what you're like and tell us what you're like. I think that lends itself to a, a good follow-up, um, which is, if I'm thinking about fit, how do I know if I fit? And I think that's a great question for alumni. What do your peers, like what are some qualities that you have seen amongst your peers um, that are, you know, like some interesting things or some qualities that you have found as his peers to be like? I think one of the big things that I've found so far uh, that's been consistent amongst all SS peers, whether it was my year, anybody before or after, has been curiosity. Usually there's some sort of STEM topic that I can bring up with someone from SSP that leads to some 30 minute extended conversation about something in detail that someone's super excited about. And usually that's a pretty key sign of passion, both for the program and for science in general. If you're able to look at some elements of SSP or something, a topic related to what SSP covers. And you can say, yeah, I could talk about this for hours and hours on end. Then that usually is a good sign that you're pretty curious about the subject and you'd be willing to take out this time of your summer and really spend it learning and growing focused around whatever subject that really interests you. So, and it also allows you to really connect well with other participants. A lot of my best memories at SSP were just having extended conversations on favorite sci-fi movies or favorite STEM topics, just having these conversations late into the night that really allowed me to get to know everybody at the program and then just learn a few new things. 100% with the curiosity, especially because there's no grading system at SSP. So you don't have that sort of extrinsic push to kind of have a way to see that you're doing well. You have to have that sort of intrinsic motivation to do well just like to learn for yourself or to know that you can and the but the the other characteristic that I was um mostly thinking of was that everyone I met was so like open to collaboration which isn't to say that everyone was the most social person I'd ever met there were introverts there were people who like kind of stuck to themselves more but the reason I, I think what sets SSP apart from a lot of other research programs and that and it's kind of reflected in who ends up going is how collaborative it is instead of doing work as yourself under a professor you are working with a team of other people and that team is working alongside every other team at the program and it's it's so it's so collaborative and you meet so many incredible people Awesome. Um, one question that we have is um, like, what are lasting skill sets or things that you've taken from SSP that have been useful to you in the days afterward? Well, one of mine I'd say is resilience or like never giving up. I mean, it sounds very cliche, but really when it comes to research, a lot of the results or like many of the outcomes you get may not be what you expected and stuff like that. And so just making sure you could reemphasize and you could like go back to it, improve what you need to do again. Um, ask, for, ask for help. That's a very big one, especially in college. You're surrounded by so many resources. So being able to ask for mentor help, being able to ask your academic director, et cetera, are extremely great skills to have in the future. And so being in, in general, just like not giving up, making sure that you can improve on it, that you could find ways to approach different problems better. And overall, those skills have helped me in college and will help me in the future. Yeah, totally agree. And one big thing I'll say is being okay with failure. I think that's a thread through a lot of SSP programs. Like 
it's not necessarily like high school where, I mean, uh, I think Kai clearly said, like very, very well said that there's no grading system. It's an intrinsic motivation that you're supposed to focus on, you're supposed to try to cultivate. And if you rely on that kind of external force, and I feel like this is true for all of my academic experiences after that. If you're looking for an external source of validation, if you're looking for an A where somebody else got to be, if you're trying to be ahead of the curve instead of just understand it for yourself and figure out how to apply it to your interest and your development academically and socially and overall, if you're not focused on your own growth, it's not going to work out for you. And like, as I've gone into the real world, I've been very focused. SSP has helped me to focus on what am I accomplishing? Have I failed or have I like, have I failed or have I failed? Like it's a difference between getting something wrong and taking that and learning from it. And that resilience, again, facing the next situation with more understanding. So yeah, being right with failure and learning how to intrinsically motivate yourself. Yeah, I really want to echo that point of resilience and also the ability to kind of think outside the box, look at problems from different angles. So far in college, I've found that SSP still has been one of the hardest things I've ever faced due to just how much information you have being thrown at you. I think one of the metaphors that got used while I was there was being having a fire hose pointed at you and trying to like get as much water as you can. You're trying to pick up all this information that's being thrown at you and use it the best you can to complete your research, complete the problem sets, and overall just succeed. But the keys to that are just not giving up and really being able to, if you're stuck on something, look at it from a different angle. And that's kind of where that collaboration comes in too. Usually one way to find a new way to look at a problem is just to talk to someone else who looks at things a little bit differently. And learning that from SSP has helped a lot for being able to ask for help and look for new ways to solve problems in college and in other aspects of my life. Yeah, and I think by virtue of SSP's values and, you know, uh, collaboration is that you come out with much better social skills and uh, communicative ability than before. I came in very much an introvert and I left SSP with so many like new friends and new skills that I, I would have otherwise taken years to develop. So it was awesome to be able to have that experience so early on. For me, I think the biggest thing was like a feeling of readiness for college, which I it's it wasn't really a skill. It was more of like a feeling afterwards. But I used to be like really scared to kind of leave high school and um, have to make new friends, leave the ones that I have right now. But I think SSP really being a five and a half week program um, at, on a college campus prepared me for the feeling of like, well, yeah, I am going to have to branch out um but it's going to be fine because like i don't it, it gives you a sort of confidence in yourself to be able to handle yourself once you go off to college i am seeing a couple of questions in the chat that i can't type fast enough to keep up with so i'm going to answer a couple of those out loud one is there have been a lot of questions about um what are how many programs how many people per program what are my chances um the admission rate for the last several years has been around 10%. It's a low number. So most who apply do not get in, but that's okay because you should do things that aren't a guaranteed easy success. As Tommy and some of the other alum talked about, failure is part of SSP. You are gonna come to SSP, those who are admitted and face failure, every single one of you, and you'll get through it together. And when you apply, you also are facing the prospect of failure and that's okay. It is okay to fail and continue. You will go on and do something else if you don't get into SSP. The admission rate is not a reason to decide to apply or not. So try as much as you can to put that out of your mind. And it's 10%, so it doesn't really matter if it's seven or 8% for some groups or some programs, some projects, or maybe it's 11 or 12% it's still really low. So it kind of doesn't matter. So just if you're excited, apply and have a backup plan. You might not get in and you can apply to a few things and you'll figure something out great to do this summer. It might be SSP. There's also been a few questions about what is it like? How many hours in lecture? How many hours working on the project? What's it like? How? What are you doing in the lab? Um, the general flow of the day is that you wake up, 
you might eat breakfast or you might just run to class and get there one minute before it starts. And you're, um, and by class, I mean, sitting with the group learning things. Um, and that's for a few hours in the morning, you eat lunch together, and then a few more hours in the afternoon, perhaps doing group work, perhaps in the lab, um, perhaps just he hearing and learning and doing practice problems. Um, you eat dinner together, and you do more work after dinner. Um, that might be going back to the lab. For Astro, it involves going to the telescope. You're all together in the evenings working on whatever the group needs to work on that day and whatever your individual group of three needs to work on. Some people will be a little bit ahead, and so they're going to go in the other room and watch videos or play hangman on the whiteboard or goof around. Some people are going to have their heads down in their computers struggling with their work, and then a couple of days later, that's going to switch. You'll get time to be um, have a little bit more relaxed, free time, spending time together, and sometimes it's going to be grind. It's going to be your head down, doing the work, struggling and suffering, and then you'll get it, and it'll be fine. So it's all day. You do get to move around occasionally. You get breaks. We're not trying to torture anyone, but it is intense. And I want you to be open to not knowing the exact schedule for the exact project you're going to do. We, we've done this before. We have it figured out. All of the academic directors and site directors know what the schedule is like. They're in control of kind of rolling that out day to day, and you will experience that. So you just need to trust that we know what we we're doing. We've been doing it for a long, long time, decades. Um, and so you kind of have to just jump in, say, th I think this sounds good, and I'm just going to go in with an open mind and do it and do my best. End of soapbox. So if anyone else wants to <laughs> chime in on that, or if there are other questions that I've not been keeping up with. Yeah. I will say as as to the challenge aspect, of course, there's no grade or anything like that. So your real like motivation to to meet the challenge that SSP is giving you is self-motivation and your own curiosity to kind of get the dang thing done. Um, and so if that's something that is exciting to you and motivating to you, then then SSP is something that will be interesting. Um, and then beyond the academic components, there's also stuff Outside of those hours, like Amy said, sometimes it's hangman, sometimes it's showing funny YouTube videos to your friends. Some of it is structured as well. I briefly referred to guest lectures and um, some of the, the field trips that happen off site. For a little bit more clarification on that, can our alums share like one of their favorite, whether it was a guest lecture that was like inspirational or uh, like a field trip that you did, one of your favorite like out of academic time experiences? One of my favorite like non-academic experiences wasn't necessarily like a guest lecture or a um, a field trip, but it was just like being able to hang out with people around campus. Um, there was one day that one of my friends was a really good pianist and we found a grand piano and one of my friends taught us to waltz while she played the piano. So there are just like there are a lot of like small things that you can find to do with the people that you you're spending all of this time with. And I think that those like the small interactions, um, the small things that you do outside of lectures and labs are really valuable. Yeah, I'd agree that some of the my favorite experiences from SSP have just been the little moments of downtime or even just one of the best parts probably would be like evenings, because sometimes once you finish all your work for the day, you'll have a little bit of time to hang out with people. And that's sometimes when the best events happen. And TAs also put some effort into allowing those things to happen too. I remember one of my favorite moments being uh, one of my TAs organized an origami night. And a few of us just went out into this little lounge space and folded origami for, I think like two hours uh, and also did puzzles. We also did puzzles. Those were fun. Um, and just kind of just talked and got to know each other a lot more. And it was during one of the earlier parts of, the program for me. So I got to know some people who at that point, I didn't know that well, really, really well. And the people who I knew just from that origami night are now some of my closest friends from SSP. So even those little moments really have big impacts on the people that you really get to know. Um. So I just wanted to add that my favorite field trip was getting to tour the particle accelerator. It was very fun because I have always been really interested in particle physics, so but I never saw a particle accelerator 
accelerator in real life. So it was an amazing experience. And personally, I remember uh, there was a guest speaker, Tyrone Hayes, at my um, at my session that literally today, my friends and I still talk about. A couple of weeks ago, I was walking on campus with one of my friends who went to SSP with me. We were trying to figure out something he put on the last slide. He felt like, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for those of y'all who end up seeing it, but like, we still don't know. <laughs> it's been years. And uh, aside from the mysteries that kind of stick with you, uh, I remember being able to ask questions and actually really feeling like heard, really feeling like I was coming up with good things and that I was kind of being a part of that intellectual discourse that I hadn't had in high school or that I hadn't had prior to that. So the Q&As and the speakers were really transformative personally. And Tyrone Hayes was just super awesome. Yeah, I think mine is definitely uh, Tyrone Hayes as well. Dr. Hayes, you had like a 30 minute I actually think maybe an hour conversation after his lecture where he just talked about his research and, you know, his experience growing up because uh, it was very much in likeness to mine right now. And it was just really cool to meet someone who was very similar to you in many aspects. I'd say for me, um, I had we, were, we had multiple field trips and also a lot of the downtime was just playing ultimate Frisbee or volleyball. And, that was, and small moments like that are just super fun, especially being active in the summer but the guest lecturers in my campus were kind of insane like all of them I really enjoyed and a lot of them even if they're not my even if they're not related to genomics at all like whether that's AI or whether that's this how to uh, go about a pre-med career etc many of them were very helpful and the people they bring are truly amazing all right well, thank you all alumni for sharing your perspectives. Um, thank you attendees for coming to hear a little about uh, SSP from us. Um, there are lots of questions that are still coming in at this exact second. Um, we were, like I mentioned, we could probably fill a whole day answering questions about SSP, the experience and what we're looking for and all that fun stuff. So um, to continue to kind of engage in these conversations, I'm gonna recommend for students, Parents, please uh, try not to do this. We have a Discord that is intended for students to have community with each other. Um, there's a place where uh, where students can ask questions of alumni. There's also a separate area in the Discord where students can ask questions of staff members. So uh, we actively monitor the Discord as well. Um, so I'm gonna post the Discord link here. If you're a student on the call and you want to continue to engage in these like more casual conversations, what's daily life like? What do you like about what you did? Um, go ahead and join that and kind of get some of those questions answered. If you have questions that are about the process or concerns about um, logistics, a lot of that, like we said, will be coming out by the end of January in terms of um, like the sites that will be available. And we're going to get the preference forms to you. Don't worry, we're not going to that's not gonna be missed. Um, but if there's anything else that's more logistical side or application requirements, those sorts of things, go ahead and send us an email about the, those sorts of things. I'm um, placing the email in the chat. Um, but thank you all so much again for being here and uh, having these conversations. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye.